Hello! It's Debbie again from Debbie's Crafty Hands. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit distracted by bee stickers here. I haven't quite got my prep ready. Um, I'm with you. Um, okay, so quite an array of stuff on my desk today. And what have all these things got in common or combined together to make? Well, today we are making buttons. Oh, find the camera. This little button is made from layered cardboard. You can make them as thick or as um, thin as you like just by laying cardboard on top of each other and making some holes. We can do some variations on it and some ideas on decoration. So, my little sample. Just talk you through what I've got on my desk. The peg is for clamping your pieces together while they're gluing. Stop them sliding apart. That's just a, a tool. Scissors for cutting your shapes. You don't have to have circles. You can have squares, you can have diamonds, you can have triangles you can have wonky ones as big or as small as you like um, they're decorative they're not serviceable to sew on a shirt necessarily but I suppose you could at a pinch um, but they wouldn't hold up to going through the washing machine because they're paper so, um, I lucky enough to have some hole punches um, circle punches um, the different sizes I'm not sure if they actually state what size they are so let's have a, a quick measure this one is I don't know what that measurement is it's a about half inch across which is the one I've done here I also have oval shapes not a very big uh, small one but it's you know gives you an idea of let me button down of size Um, I wouldn't suggest you go too much bigger than this one which is a two inch unless you want to do a giant button then you know but mainly for the the looks of them they look nice and dainty smaller I feel so um, if you have various punches different shapes you can experiment maybe a butterfly punch you've got a, one that's a nice shape you can have a, a play but the principle of it is you have your shapes you um, draw your circles or punch out your circles or your whatever shape you're using um, and you need at least three layers to make it firm enough to use you can do more layers if you want a thicker button this is uh, about a sixteenth of an inch I suppose um, so it's quite tiny could get away with more layers but it is also firm enough not to flop about on you so I've done various sizes these ones were drawn round so I drew round a lid of a deodorant and, and cut my circles out when you cut your circles out um, the technique I did on a previous video I'll just show again for any new viewers you want to as you close your scissors down turn the paper you don't want to be too choppy 
turn your paper and then you get a smoother line going round. There are various <laughs> infinite items that you can draw around. Bottom of my glue stick, the Pritt stick, different sizes. Cotton reels make good um, templates to draw around. Again, different sizes. The bottom of a, a marker pen. If they're not round, maybe you want to do a oval shape, bottom of an nail polish bottle. So look around yourself, look around your surroundings, work out what size and shape you want and go for it. Okay, so punch pin or board pin for making my holes. So you mark where you want your holes and center up on against a ruler or on your craft mat and line up approximately halfway and push pin through to mark your holes. You can do it with a hole punch on the bigger buttons. but it depends on how big you want your hole. So you can mark your hole, then you can go in with maybe a knitting needle, push it through, and all, uh, whatever you have handy that you could push through. Um, you could even use a safety pin to mark your, your holes. So, You can do them, as I say, as big or as small as you like, but be careful, you need to have a little gap in between. You can do four holes. These aren't glued together yet, but just to give you an idea, I'll do it on the top one to mark it out. So you might want to put it on your... So you might want to go one, two, Three, four. Now that's a bit wonky, but embrace the wonky. Going, losing you. Just punch them through a bit more so that you can see better. Um, you can use a ruler. Um, you don't want to go too near the edge and you don't want to be too close together. That's the only rules. You could do six or eight holes depending on the size of your your button you're making. Um, and then maybe do a, a crisscross lacy pattern down your button. You don't well you don't. You could do like a Number five, so five, one, two, one in the middle at one, two, and do a pattern on it. So use your imagination. These, these videos are to give you the basics for you to go from there. Um, I'm trying to use materials that you can find around you and supplies that are reasonably inexpensive. You can use a I want to say projector, but it the word escapes me. <laughs> a compass, I beg your pardon. Oh brilliant. Too many nights in a row, that's my excuse. Um work working nights that is, not uh, Raving. 
So the reason I was looking at the stickers, I was thinking maybe to decorate, you could put a sticker on your button. Um, and then you have a, a feature um, and maybe go either side of his body rather than piercing him. Um, so the over one, what I'll do is I'll stick him together and we'll have a play with that one and I'll show you what I mean about lacing. The, the longer ones are easier to use more holes with. Let's grab my glue page. Let's fold it in half, it's a little bit cumbersome for the amount of stuff I have on my desk. So basically you need three layers of card. Now I wouldn't suggest you use this time around corrugated cardboard. Um, one, it's quite difficult to cut nicely and two, I found that the craft punches don't take it, it's too thick. So you'd have difficulty punching it out if you have corrugated card but most cereal box card should be okay if you've got that you know, old cereal box handy that would be fantastic I've just got my glue on the floor bear with me I shall disappear down and grab it and I've got not too many hairs on it that's good clonk 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 in my chair right okay let's get back to business so you can use glue stick wet glue um whatever you got handy it's just really to stick the cardboard together so you don't need anything too heavy on it so layer and even Get your shapes. Let's make sure they're level on all sides. and even and your trusty peg hold it in place while that dries so while that's drying I'll give you some other suggestions for covering your buttons or decorating your buttons um come back pink butterflies so you could pop a butterfly on your button um, from the decoupage technique um, from your serviettes or whatever pattern you have on your serviettes even if it's just a colour you want to use um, you can glue stick it on and um, then maybe seal it with some clear nail polish onto nail polish you can just literally colour your button with nail polish I've got this lovely um, greeny blue one of my favourite colours on the planet absolutely love this colour and just from the middle out gently go around this also seals your cardboard in a nice um, layer waterproof layer you can go back on do as many layers as you want but let it dry in between I want to hold my button so I've got my little sewing um, I can't get the words out say so, um, my little knitting needle double ended, off, double, I had a day off yeah and now I'm going to get back into the swing of it um, so that's let that dry 
Now the glue on this doesn't take that long to dry so we should be able to um, do our uh, pattern. So we want to measure down the centre end to end, roughly the middle, eyeball it if you just a thin line just so you've got down the center and find the middle again so what would you use these for well, like card making or yeah card making or in your journaling um just for like clothes for like can you ever look you ever you, you, I haven't but yeah yeah that would be because it's not necessarily going to take the clothing on and off so you, you could um possibly so we've got the three three holes each side you could do further down or further up if you wanted to but this is just to you know give you a sample you can use an owl as a spool sorry um the end of a pin is brilliant to make your holes push through make sure you don't get your finger on the other side You can use all different threads. The bigger buttons with bigger holes, you can maybe use a narrow ribbon if you're using a hole punch. Um, button me button out again, it's gone a bit curly whirly. Now, if you get little puckery bits on the opposite side, all you need to do is go back from the other side and push them back through the hole with yeah your blunt point so to speak so you've got the sharp point for making the holes and then the blunt point for pushing things back through need Pass me some of that, that orange wool. Absolute. Attack. What, what are you destroying right now? Well, I'm just borrowing the thread off the, the tag um, to demonstrate on the button. That's uh, oh, necklace leather here. So you need a a chunkier needle if you're using wool or embroidery thread. Cotton, you can use cotton, but it doesn't show up because it's usually a bit narrow, but you can do several layers on your cotton if you want to. I'm just delving into my wonderful... You could actually make the holes with a, a darning needle as well. That's another option. So there's various options for lots of different tools for the same job depending on what you've got to hand. I need to find a, a finish but big eye needle. So I'm not baffing around trying to uh, thread my needle. Wasting your time. Okay. Your precious time. When you're threading um, threads that have got more than one thread, nice crisp edge, I tend to push with finger and thumb and lay the hole of the needle, the eye of the needle, over it and push down. And 
most of the time that works for me. We have a nice bright red. Now before you do your your lacing, you could decorate your button up. Um, you can use um, thin crafting paper, scrapbooking paper, um, copy weight paper I would suggest. Um, you can colour it in with a marker. Should we do that? Let us quickly. Now, blue and orange go well together. Nice colour, actually. I like that. Now, if you've got a little bit uneven on the sides, just go around the edges. And it will hide a multitude of sins. That. Now you don't necessarily have to do the back, but it depends on what you're putting it on as to how much of the back is going to be seen. So as they're such a small item, you might as well do the backs um, and then you know you're not going to have any white bits as such. Okay. We're ready to lace. The so top right hand hole coming up through. Pull your thread and leave a little tail so that you don't pull it right through. Hold the tail with your finger. And go to the second hole down on the opposite side and go back to the back from the front if it'll let me okay here we go then we're going to zigzag down the bottom right corner still a little bit damp that's why it's uh, when it's drier it's a bit firmer Now, get my angles right. I want to go back into the middle left. Make a little V shape. And then up to the top left. Like one of those pictures, how you can draw it without um, going back over the same bit. Oof. Work out your angles. And down to, into the last middle, the last hole on the right hand side. Get in there. That nice and tight. So it's. That. And then, last but not least, or nearly last, to the bottom left. Come up and then back down the middle on the right again. Making sure you pull your wool from the back so it doesn't um, pucker and you end up with big gaps. Try not to go through the wool as you're going back through um, to split the wool because you might not be able to get it through very easily. So we have our crisscross pattern on the front and are messy on the back. Work underneath. 
we've got a little cross on the back and so we can cut up well, tie it first or knot it and then it'll stop it pulling through I don't want it too bulky, so once you've tied it, let's put a spot of glue on the knot to stop it slipping through. For that I'll probably use my Kalal or something, a bit um, fabric glue, um, Beacons 3-in-1, that type of glue, just to seal the knot. If you're using a nylon thread like that you might want to let's put my um, nail polish away before it dries rigid on me um, you're using a, let that not dry before you trim too far down or let that dry so, yeah you want it as flat as possible you can also put a little bit of um, Color tape over the top to stop things pulling out. I'm going to do a second knot into the glue. Get the threads around. And that's now ready to go on your project. Ah, uh, hello. Amia, you want to be star yeah. of the show, do you? Go on. Excuse me. Thank you. Good girl. No, no, you're not going out. So, sample number one. I'll pop that on there. And my little nail polish button is dry, so I'll do it another coat. You can do um, plain colours and then put a glitter, like you would do with your own nails really. You put um, a plain and then a glitter and then a top coat or whatever. You can, um, if you don't have co top coat, you can use glossy accents, which is a type of glue that um, self levels and um, dries clear and gives like a glass finish. Um, so that's uh, a quite a useful glue. Um, now going back to... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Going back to making your circles, another potential idea is stamping your circles to cut round. So you could use... Now, I haven't tried this, so I'm just thinking out the box and off the cuff. So I can stamp my image from the bottom of my pen straight from my ink pad. And I have the circle to draw around. Again, I have a circle to draw around. These objects are also really good for mark making which is uh, another subject to be covered at a later date. Put that in the diary, please, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you go get the idea. Now I'll wipe off the bottom of my pen before I get a black ink everywhere. Um, so, just to recap, as many holes as you would like, give it an idea, um, to stamp your circles, draw your circles, use a compass, got it right this time, not a projector. <laughs> um, draw around bottoms of objects. Um, to get your shapes, hole punch, 
Use a push pin. Use a needle. Use a conventional hole punch. You know, you might want to be conventional. Not for me, but, you know, some people might want to be conventional. Or, um, my lovely crocodile. Looks a bit fierce, but it's very gentle, really. And it has two settings. It has the um, 3 sixteenths and the uh, 1 eighth. That is a um, the middle setting is for um, pilots. And yeah, good point, Pete. Um, you can, on the bigger buttons, maybe set some small eyelets on them in the center. So, and that will that will hold it in place and stop it, to, you know, sort of tearing. So, stickers to decorate your buttons, decoupage your buttons, use coffee strength paper, either printed or your own design. Colour it with markers. Um, I would suggest, though, if you're using it that where it might get damp, I would then glaze over it with either clear nail polish or some um, sealant. So, how are we doing for time, Maestro? Time to go. And I'll see you in the next episode. Much love. Bye-bye.